Well, hey y'all, happy Monday. Well, welcome back. So we had a little chilliness last week and uh, there's a couple things that had a little struggle in my yard, but for the most part, everything is coming up and growing good. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you how we um, constructed a trellis for a dragon fruit that I got, I don't know, kind of at the end of last summer. Um, yeah, it was kind of at the end of the summer because the guy I got it from said to wait until it cooled off to transplant it, and that's now. <laughs> so I modeled, um, well, we, you know, we tried to replicate um, this trellis that Kevin Esprutu from Epic Gardening, the Epic Gardener, um, we, we modeled after a trellis that he built for his, um, his dragon fruit and we we spent a lot of time trying to find um, the right container for it and we wanted to have one more like his his is taller um, I think we're about the same gallons wise um, because when you plant a dragon fruit you really want to put it into its long-term spot so that's what we're gonna share with you today in today's video is how we set that up how the transplant went and then I'm gonna do a quick tour of the garden because almost everything that I planted is up except for the darn things in the a couple of darn squash like I've got squash up in this bed um, but my bags are slow mowing and um, so that's gonna be our video for today so let's go check it out we're here with our big tub this is kind of like the one that I've got the flowers in except we paid less for it um, which meant we had to drill holes in it but for $15 in savings find one at big lots so this is our method here and all of these things we actually had in the garage from other projects so we've got like this thick center post um, that's the middle can you hold it for a second and then down here we've got just these two by fours that are kind of creating an anchor we're gonna fill this up with soil so that's gonna hold it all down but this gives us a base and what this essentially is going into is a trellis so there's gonna be like a box frame on the top of it here also constructed out of two by fours so now we just made the final cuts and my husband's gonna attach this and then I'll build the frame so in a minute I'll come back and show you that in the next steps we finished out our little mock-up of the Epic Gardener's dragon fruit trellis. So we got our base, we got our, and these are all recycled pieces if I hadn't said that already. And then we built this top part up here. So the theory is, is you want, it. well the deal is, is that dragon fruit need to grow up and then drape over to start making flowers and fruit. So that's what we're gonna simulate here. So basically the dragon fruit's gonna be like about right here. And then we're gonna, you know, use some garden tape to keep it up against the pole. It's gonna grow up and then come through here and drop over and make fruit. So now we're gonna fill it up with dirt and we're gonna start with, um, this is one of the buckets from last year's okra. And we're gonna use that kind of as our base soil down there at the bottom. So we're gonna fill it up with, on the base with that recycled soil. And then we're gonna come back in with a cactus succulent mix for the majority of the soil. We put the old soil to about halfway and I want it to lean and grow up this way. And this is just some EB Stone Organics um, cactus and succulent mix so I'm just gonna get this worked in around the count the container and then that'll help me know where this is gonna be so I'm gonna get that worked in and show you what it looks like when we're done hey do you want to show them the bag real quick so that's what it is right there EP stone. Of course I got it at Summer Winds. I decided I was actually going to film this with you because I have no idea what this is going to look like. So I'm just kind of packing it so that my soil will mostly stay where it was. And then there's some wood chips at the top of this. So I'm just going to kind of take those out as best as I can. And then try to get a real good grip on it. Oh, 
okay so I just wanted to see you know what it was gonna look like but I guess it's pretty simple so again I wanted to I'm gonna hold it a little bit and build a base it turned off no that's fine it didn't okay so now that I've got I kind of had to angle and I'm gonna build in some dirt behind it I'm not gonna bury the the stalk at all but just to give it that support because I wanted to grow up this way start training it that way so I think that'll be a good support now I'm just gonna come in with some more soil around here and then we'll show you what that looks like okay so oh that's only the hundredth time I've done that <laughs> okay now kind of because I don't want it covering it too much but I need some over here so you can push some this way and build up yeah fill in this part right here so it looks like the soil that it was in is exactly the soil that we have it looks very very similar to it so for right now I don't even know if I'm gonna need to tie that but it still feels a little loose and since it's a succulent and it's not a crazy root thing I might still just get some simple garden tape to keep that there but I definitely want to mark this to start keeping track of if this thing is even growing so that's our little first attempt at ever growing a dragon fruit so if you've grown dragon fruit definitely let me know down in the comments any tips or tricks you've got and otherwise you can just learn along with me thing is looking happy carrots looking happy some surprise a toy onions coming in garlic looking happy slow mo tato uh, down here we got some strawberries we got some more nasturtia coming in nasturtia there the forest of nasturtia also some borage coming in the forest of calendula all the happy happy strawberries all my seedlings have come up except for the ones that are in grow bags awesome romaine there waiting on those peppers looking happy just in time for another round of pepper season peas loved those days of cooling off so they're making flowers and making us happy with lots of peas to eat everything down here on the bale is popping up and looking happy lots of little happy friends in there and we got flowers coming in on this tomato that one's happy too. More flowers coming on the bok choy, but a lots of the beans are drying out, so I'll be picking them soon. The lavender is so happy, and the bees love it, and it's just so beautiful. This volunteer lettuce is shooting up and gonna go right to flower and <laughs> spread its seed all over here. We've got some lettuces coming up there that we planted a week or so ago. We've got another secession that'll start coming in here in another week. This is another squash bag there where we're waiting to have a pop-up. Squash bag, empty bag, squash bag, squash bag. Those are Armenian squash. Those were in the greenhouse. That's a plant that I split up from other plants. Here's a little tomato forest and some kale over there. That bag's empty. This is romaine, green romaine. Oh, and we've got some beans popping up back there. This is all carrots. Over here, everything that we planted in the raised bed is popping up. We've got melons and cucumbers, um, along with some spaghetti squash down there. This Cherokee purple, I did not know it was going to flower, but it is. It's adjusted and gotten real happy. We've got another round of radishes coming in, and I've let all the kids have all the radishes, so I'm letting that one get huge and I'm keeping it for myself. 
these carrots over here are finally looking happy and our little row of green beans are all coming up and just looking cute as all get out our red potatoes are winning the race right now um they are getting pretty tall this little one here is probably about uh it's up to this so about two inches tall so we're gonna let everybody catch up to this one or look so probably in a week and a half I'll fill these in with some dirt this babe here is settled in and started to flower and over here in the russet bag just starting to get one poke out there and you can see that this one's about to erupt so by the time we go to fill up the other bag this one should be getting pretty close to wanting some dirt itself this is all self-seeded and this is how it self-seeds because <laughs> the seeds get left here and they dry and they get blown back into the bed now the stunner over here the calendula is always the stunner but the real stunner is this borage this is self-seeded also and you can see it just has so many crowns the bees love it the flowers and especially the tender leaves are all edible so look up the benefits of this beautiful plant and um, get some going because like i said this all went on and crazy from an original mother plant that i did throw seed for but look how big she is now she's almost like two foot wide and i just think it looks amazing and then we got more calendula let's get back on this side so we got more calendula over here then we've got some bush cucumbers there and this is Maisie's little radish garden this is a garden huckleberry and I'm just in a minute I'm going to plant this one up into a bag as well so this one <laughs> Leslie and anybody else that was at the swap mine is already starting to flower so let me know in the cut in the comments what yours is doing and then some tomatillas that I got just like two weeks ago really settled in awesome super happy and they're making lots of flowers and this time I'm just letting them because I want tomatillas and I'm not gonna make it bush I'm just gonna let it go crazy so tomato Avenue this is an empty bag rosemary is super happy this is a poppy <laughs> that i got from leslie and it's finally it's not going to live forever so that's why i put it with the sage and so it's happy then over here we've got that's a red onion that's dill over there um this is all uh what is that cilantro and then we've got like i said the onion interplanted there and mint's happy the oregano is finally all coming back out look at all this basil down here like this is um even at this size it smells so good look how beautiful the purple is so i can't wait to see what the purple looks like you know when it gets bigger is it gonna have a bunch of purple leaves on it that'd be just phenomenal now this is our bushy volunteer that um came up in like january so it's been over here it's going to be a strong mama jamma and it's probably going to be that cherry because of the way it's making these little branches um but who knows and back there more deal now the cool little evenings that we had as late didn't fare so well for some of those cucumbers that i bought in a six pack so that's one of them and then there's more red onions back there this is a beauty that got split apart from a double pack that was either um a champion or an early girl and then these are all the original um nebula bunching nebulas that i planted and so everything's looking amazing So I'm curious, do you have a dragon fruit? And if so, what kind are you growing? I don't even know what variety that we've got, but now that we've got our little setup going, we're really encouraged to get some more. And so I'm gonna be looking around for those in the next couple weeks. Um, next up this next week, I'm going to be planting my a second round of planting, so to speak, what I'd call my secession planting over in the bales. So we should be able to check that out very soon. And, um, 
Otherwise, I hope that you enjoyed seeing what's growing in my garden and I hope that your garden is growing as happy as can be. Have the best day ever and I look forward to chatting with you again soon. Bye!